Welcome, my name's Sheila Ferguson. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. Today we're gonna to talk about my new book, Journey Back to Me. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the recently self-published Sheila, who's a business performance expert and a high-tech executive. How are you doing, Sheila, my love? I'm doing great, thank you. To start off with, thank you so much for availing yourself on the show today. And second of all, congratulations on your new book that has just come out, um, you know, the journey, to, uh, the journey Back to Me. Now, obviously, you are still buzzing and the whole excitement is still in there. That's the reason why we brought you on the show today, so that you can tell us a little bit and take us on a journey back to yourself there, Sheila. Now, we might want to take you on a journey a little bit back. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Sheila, and what prompted you to start this um, you know, uh, writing journey and put out the book that you have now termed yourself the adult children's book. All right. Yeah. So a little bit about me is that I've done just about a little bit, a little bit of everything I've done. Uh, I started off as a business analyst in software, um, eventually ran software companies, um, business analytic companies, um, digital marketing and advertising companies, manufacturing companies. So I've got a pretty diverse background. Um, I came to Hilton Head Island a couple of years ago and I didn't know what was next for me and I went to actually go see Brendan Burchard his high performance academy and in that it was really interesting he has this quote that he says um, that when our thoughts and actions are destructive that it's our responsibility to implement new practices and habits for a happier freer life and that really inspired me is that I, I know that anybody and everybody can actually learn to interrupt um, destructive thinking and implement practices, you know, to, to, for a happier, freer life. And, um, and that was actually the premise of the book. I actually started with that. So that, that whole quote was what inspired me. Absolutely. Thank you so much for relaying, um, you know, that profound journey that you took over there. And I know Brendan Burchard is famously known for, uh, you know, letting know his um, audience that everybody in this world is here to live, to love and to matter and to matter. Love, matter. And yeah. Exactly. And also um, everybody has a story and I would suppose your story came out in the form of, you know, the journey back to me. Now, Lisa, who happens to be the protagonist of your book, uh -huh. goes through a car accident. All right. That's a devastating point to start off with. What sort of happened maybe in your life that is a metaphor of an accident or is something like that actually have, um, you know, occurred in your life that prompted you to um, establish the book like that? Um, well, a couple of things. The first one is that um, the very first chapter where she has the accident really kind of sets it up that she's asleep. She's not awake in her life. She's busy, busy, busy. Um, she reaches for her phone, you know, to, to answer it, even though that she shouldn't. So it kind of sets up the whole how busy our world is, how asleep we are at the wheel, um, how irresponsible we are with our actions without thinking, you know, and, and she actually has a car wreck, which causes her to be unconscious. And then that really sets up the context of the bit, because the context of the bit is she actually gets a tour of the imagination of her mind. And so inside her mind, she gets to learn firsthand how happiness is a function of her thinking. And she, the whole landscape that she sees in her mind, that everything she sees from the, the mountains to the volcano to the river to the, everything she sees is actually influenced by fear. And so those become the metaphors for each of the lessons. So, so just as in life, how your thoughts, you go where your thoughts take you. Your business goes where your thoughts take you. Your relationships go where your thoughts take you. Well, Liza's hijacked by her mind or by her thoughts and her thoughts take her to mysterious and dangerous places within her mind and each one of them has a lesson to the extent of how fear influences our thoughts our beliefs and ultimately the quality of her life and the depth in our relationships and what she can do to free herself from the shackles of fear so that's the 
that's the essence of the book. So I take her unconscious so she can uh, she can be in, in the landscape of her mind. Absolutely. That's usually a very dangerous place to be because right now I'm just <laughs> thinking I'm just thinking of pizza, beer, and what I'm gonna be doing after work. So you do uh -huh. think that um, in the book, Lisa gets to learn firsthand how thinking actually shapes her life. In what way are uh, thoughts and uh, what we think or what we project, um, you know, it re related to what happens in our lives? I mean, in, in essence, it's everything, right? I mean, how, how our thoughts drive our actions, our actions actually um, yield the results that we have. So it, it all starts with thought. And um, the, the, most of us think um, that we don't have much, much control over our thoughts. And, and we, actually, we actually have a lot of control over the habits of our thoughts, is that we have habits and thinking that we're just not conscious of. And when we're conscious of them, then we can actually implement new ones. But it does require an awareness and a consciousness and an attentiveness to where your mind is and what you're doing with your mind. Absolutely. And as uh, Lisa is going along in, in the book, you know, during her journey back to herself, uh, supposedly, yeah. she actually uncovers secrets, um, you know, to get rid of her fear-based behaviors, you know, that are inconsistent with her true self. Now, how much is fear actually crippling um, everyday business people or everyday people to, you know, really unleash their true, um, you know, their true self? Um, I would say to a much greater extent than we're actually aware of. So I've, I've worked with entrepreneurs, like all my career, either um, been a COO supporting, a, you know, a CEO that's the entrepreneur I've been an entrepreneur myself, and my experience in, um, in high performances is that in general, when an entrepreneur is making a mistake or not taking action, not doing the things that they know they should do, it's always fear. There's a fear behind every mistake a CEO makes or every, every um entrepreneur is that you know you'll see where they're not doing where they should where they're distracted where they're not taking action with an employee that they know they should but it's there's there's fear it permeates everything we do and and it's like if you open your eyes to it then you can actually see the thinking behind it and the thinking is fraudulent that's what's so cool about it the thinking is fraudulent Absolutely. I'm already getting lessons from this, you know, even without the book at hand. Now, <laughs> now, now Sheila, obviously in, um, you know, in life, these dialogues that are happening in our mind, which you have corrected us to say that, you know, your thought process affects, um, you know, your circumstances and everything else. And then fear also inhibits us from, you know, showcasing who our true self is. Has any of that ever popped up in, in your own life that, you know, you've felt the fear but continue to do it anyway? Um, yes. As, I mean, most recent example is the book, right? It's like I've never written a book. I actually haven't written creatively since I was in high school, which was a long time ago. Um, and, you know, when I wrote the first draft, um, I initially got feedback from a lot of people and the, and the, and the, and the feedback conflicted and, um, and I didn't know what to do with it, even the feedback, right? So the self-doubt through the whole process, I had to struggle with the self-doubt and, and the essence of the book is to actually go inward, listen, follow your heart. And so, uh, in writing the book, I've broken just about every rule there is, um, I, when I went to go choose an illustrator, I didn't want a, I didn't want an experience illustrated. I wanted an illustrator that had never illustrated a book before and was afraid at the thought of doing it. When I got my editor, I chose an editor that had edited but had never edited fiction and was a little fearful of um, of being able to you know do a good job. But that's what I wanted. I wanted the whole book, each aspect of it, to be touched by someone stepping out of their comfort zone to actually help me create the end product. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be a result of the overcoming fear to produce something you're proud of. 
wow, that's a journey in and of itself. You know, the <laughs> yeah. book is journey yeah. back to me. And uh, your book also went through a journey going through people that are going, uh, you know, out of their comfort zone and doing things for the first time. So what, what was going through your head when you were, you know, you know, choosing all those people? Were you not afraid that they might just mess it up for you since it was going to be the first time for you or were you really confident that whatever was going to come out of it you know the energy they were going to put into that book was also going to be felt by the end user um you know i went in and out of in and out of self-doubt in and out of doubt um you know throughout the whole process is that uh you know i'd actually stop myself and go oh you know uh, I know what you're doing. You're, you're, you know, you're afraid. It's like, yeah, because when I first went to go do the editor, I was looking for the best line editor I could find. I was looking at their work, you know, and then, and then all of a sudden, I just stopped and said, "Wait a second, that's not, that's not what I want. What I want is someone that hasn't done this type of work before. Someone that's out of their comfort zone. That's what I want. It's somebody that has a passion for the material that I'm." writing that was more important to me than 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 the the experience so um so anyway, that was the criteria it's not it's not usually the way i operate but it was that to me i was putting everything i'd written to the test <laughs> so absolutely your book now has come out to be a masterpiece even christine spear from the crowded book space has deemed it um a purge tenor that is more of a um, children's book for adults, is it? Um, yes, yeah. so I use colorful metaphors, playful dialogue. You know, so it's um, it's it's interesting. Is that I use the um, almost childlike approach to be able to hammer in the point, just because your your guards down, right? Because you're just flowing with the story, the adventure, and then bam. You know, there's the point. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time on the show today. Now, how can people get a hold of this copy of the book? Um, it's available on Amazon. Um, and it's also av available on uh, Balboa Press. So um, those are two. They'll also be, it's like, it's kind of funny is that they sent me um, information about, um, they want to do a press release. And so I went to go, look to see what a Balboa press release looked like and actually saw my book was online. So I haven't actually, I just saw a physical copy of the bit for the first time today at, at a friend's house that had ordered it on Amazon. So that was my first experience of actually seeing it in print. So it's a, uh, it'll be available in ebook. Um, the, the peak feature, you know, the look inside feature and the description aren't on Amazon yet, but they will be. So we're really early in the process. And my actual copies are on the way in the mail, but people are already ordering the book and, and, um, and reading it. So you can order it on Amazon or Bebo Press. Absolutely. Is this the first interview you've heard about the book? It is. It wow. is. Thank you so much for gracing us with that uh, initiation of a whole charade of media that's going to come in after people have read this book because it has come with a lot of um, acclaim to it, you know, the perspective altering introspection that people are going to look at and it actually challenges readers to think about the way they think. So a lot of people are going to be clamoring on your door asking <laughs> <laughs> asking to interview you so that you can tell them a bit of a story about your journey back to me. Now, obviously, we're getting into a new year there, Sheila, and uh, it's going to be new beginnings and everything else that comes along with it. When the dust settles um, about the launch of this book, what else can we expect to come um, you know, from you there? Um, well, uh, one of the things that um, comes with the book is I've got my website. It comes with an online community. And the function there is, is I really want to get my ear close to the ground to see what people are hungry for next. So I'd like to get on the speaking circuit to see how many lives I can actually influence. And I'd love this to be um, you know, a parent-child conversation to where we teach our children 
that the fear that's in our head or the chatter that's in our head, that we can actually overcome that and actually how to, how to become proficient in, um, in organizing and managing our thoughts. So uh, ultimately, that's where I'd like to go, what shape that takes or what form that takes. Um, I'm not sure. So I'll go, I'll go into listening mode next. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time and your um, level of expertise on the show today and actually making this your first interview about, um, you know, the journey back to me. Thank you, Prosper. And I really, I really want to thank you for what you do for entrepreneurs is that I live in the United States. It's midnight here, but I watched one of your videos and saw how enthusiastic are. And sometimes being an entrepreneur can be a very lonely experience. And it's really great that you're equipping them with the tools that they need to manage their thoughts, get back up into action, dust themselves off if they've had a setback and just go after it again. So thank you for doing that for them. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. All right. Great stuff.